Welcome to all of you this morning, those of you here and those who are watching via OLN, and all of us on the pastoral staff wish you a blessed new year. Let us now begin our covenant service together. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord who established a new covenant through his Son, Jesus Christ. We come in spirit and in truth. Please turn now to hymn number 57, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, and stand as you wish. May be seated. Let us unite in our opening prayer. O oh God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into covenant with you, Reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us give thanks for all of God's mercies. O oh God, our covenant friend, you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. We praise your holy name, O oh God. You have given us life and reason and set us in a world filled with your glory. You have comforted us with family and friends and ministered to us through the hands of our sisters and brothers. We praise your name, O oh God. You have filled our hearts with a hunger after you and have given us your peace. 
you have redeemed us and called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have given us a place in the fellowship of your spirit and the witness of your church. We praise your holy name, O God. You have been our light in darkness and a rock of strength in adversity and temptation. You have been the very spirit of joy in our joys and the all-sufficient reward in all our labors. We praise your holy name, O God. You remembered us when we forgot you. You followed us even when we tried to flee from you. You met us with forgiveness when we returned to you. For all your patience and overflowing grace, we praise your holy name, O God. For the Old Testament reading, I turn to the book of the prophet Jeremiah, reading from chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The Lord says, the time is coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. Although I was like a husband to them, they did not keep that covenant. The new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel will be this. I will within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. None of them will have to teach his fellow countrymen to know the Lord, because all will know me, from the least to the greatest. I will forgive their sins, and I will no longer remember their wrongs. I, the Lord, have spoken. Good morning. morning. Will you open your hymnal with me to um, Amazing Grace, number 378, and will you sing along with me? We will do verses 1, 2, and 6.
For the epistle reading, I turn to 1 Peter, the first chapter beginning with verse 13, a call to holy living. So then, have your minds ready for action. Keep alert and set your hope completely on the blessing which will be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Be obedient to God and do not allow your lives to be shaped by those desires you had when you were still ignorant. Instead, be holy in all that you do, just as God who called you is holy. The scripture says, be holy because I am holy. A reading from the Gospel of John. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted into a new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On this one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more, live, to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today, however, we meet as generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. So let us make this covenant to God our own. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ 
and pray. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these admonitions. First, set apart some time, more than once, to be spent alone before the Lord in seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you, in carefully thinking through all the conditions of the covenant, in searching your hearts, whether you have already freely given your life to Christ. Consider what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are. And whether you, after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. You have opened your mouths to the Lord and you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. And last, be then prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Open your hearts to the Lord as we pray. Let us pray together. O oh, righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you shall put away all your idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart renounce them all, covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world in your power. I will watch all temptations that will lead me away from you, for my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ. God has offered to be your God again, if you would let him. Before all heaven and earth, I will acknowledge you as my Lord and God. 
I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body and soul, as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means to coming to God. Jesus, I do here on bended knee accept Christ as the only new and living way and sincerely join myself in a covenant with him. O oh, blessed Jesus, I come to you, hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy of even to wash the feet of your servants. I do here with all my power accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own worthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do here covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as a all. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death shall part me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I do here willingly put my neck under your oak to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. Therefore, take them as the rule of my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction and not follow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows your heart. O oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without guile or reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide me to help me to set it aright. And now, O oh God the Father, who from this day forward shall look upon, I shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory to you, O oh God the Son, who have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood, and now as my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. Almighty God, the Lord Omnipotent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it, and let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. Christ invites all, all of you, to his table to be present with him and join together in the sacrament of Holy Communion. A sacrament is that moment when we experience our Lord Jesus Christ in a profound way. Throughout the years, we have come together in Holy Communion and have always found it to be a special moment in all of our lives. I want to remind you again, everyone is invited. This morning, we will take communion by using uh, the kit that was given to you when you came in. And as you notice, on one side, and don't do it yet, but you'll tear off and there's a small piece of bread in there that serves as our representation of the body of Christ. And then on the other side, we'll tear off and we'll join together in celebrating the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us come together in, in this time of sacrament. O 
Oh God, you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, into our world to be among us. We have been reminded just in the past few weeks that he came into this world to be one of us, to identify with us so that we can identify with him. That is a blessing, Lord, and we thank you for that. And he came not only to be our friend and the one who was with us, but to come to be our savior, to grow up and to die for our sins. And in the midst of that, to rise again and give us the hope, the hope that comes in resurrection. On the night before Jesus died, he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And once again, he gave thanks and he gave the cup to his disciples. He said, this is my blood. The blood of a new covenant poured, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it often in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit will be present on us gathered here as we live into this new covenant. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will be present in this meal, that it might be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the body and blood of Christ, redeemed by his Spirit to offer ourselves to the world. Through your church, we give thanks and honor and glory for your presence in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We invite you to take a small piece of bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat with joy. And now prepare to drink of the cup. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink, enjoy. Let us pray together. God, we thank you for the gift of this holy meal. We thank you for your love that is complete. We thank you that you call us beloved. We ask now that as we walk out into the world in just a short period of time, that we would be your covenant people, not only redeemed by you, but to offer your redeeming love to others. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to sing hymn number 399. Take our life, let it be consecrated.
your homework this week is to perhaps take home the booklet which you received this morning and read regularly the covenant prayer. Be reminded of this relationship you have entered into with the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and make your life into a life that is God's life. Also, we want to remind you that this morning we will take offering at the doors this morning and uh, there are ushers ready f to help you out with that. And also too, uh, as we make our offering to God throughout the year, uh, that our financial secretary has put together envelopes for us and they're available if you've not received them yet. And if you've not gotten them, that you would uh, make sure that Jim knows about that so he can make that for you. Also, uh, yeah, you seem to want to tell us something. What to do with those? There's a basket in the back. Thank you very much, Rob. There's a basket in the back that will we'll take your used cups along with us, or you can keep them if you'd like to. And may the God who establishes his covenant with those who seek to enter the kingdom be always present with you. May the Holy Spirit of God guide your life now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Yeah, but still. Yeah, but still.
Okay. Five things. 
Here, put it on this here. I think it's there. That's more better, I think. Donna, Do Donna, Donna, why don't you do your work right? <laughs> got to wrap it around his ear. Yeah, it's a, you got to wrap it real good. Wrap it real good, all right. Yeah, put it on his eyelash. <laughs> duct tape? Yeah, maybe on his glasses. You want me to take my glasses off? No, I think you're okay. You think I'm okay? Yeah. Oh, hey, 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 did you hear that? You're okay. She thinks so. You're not sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wherever my thing is stuck in, so I'll look. Five, it says right here. That's where the paper clip is. Yes, you do. I've got a hundred work quiz for you guys to take. Those are neat pencils. Well, you, you just go to the golf store and they give you a whole package. That is a golf pencil. Yeah, it is. They're easy to... You can't take that hundred point quiz? Do you, do, you have a, do you have lead in your pencil? Well, Master of Ceremonies, would you? You're Master of Ceremonies. What are you going to do about it? Do you have a morning prayer for us? Yes, I do. All right. Let me ask everyone if there's someone you'd like to pray for.
bring it next Sunday. So okay. So you're in charge next Sunday. Make sure you get that card signed. I'm teaching next Sunday. I'll forget what I told you. That's right. I'll turn it on. Are there any other people? I'd like to mention my caregiver, Wanda Martin. She was supposed to see me the day before New Year's, you know, and uh, the nurse Ruby came up and said that she had test Wanda had tested positive that morning, so she went home with COVID. So she's 75, you know. I kind of worry, you know. I hope she's okay. But uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you take care of our friends, so many of them that may need our, her, your help. But we ask that you help Jerry. We ask that you help Wanda recover from their illnesses. We ask that you reach out and take care of as many of your people as you can. As we start a new year, we're grateful for all the promises and resolutions that we make and help us to keep them. We also say that we have so many things to be grateful for our families and our wonderful Audubon and the people. Our people make the difference. We ask that you care for us, give us your love and grace. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Bob, appreciate it. Okay, well, that's a good question. The official, the official day to start this is, is uh, number five. But last week, the, whatever the teacher was, did not cover things very well. So let's go, let's go back to uh, uh, page 32. 32. 32. We want to look at that big pile of mess there that somebody made. Yeah. Page 32. Okay. No, I'm, I have my, the lesson plan calls for something different. So. Okay. Uh, on the uh, on the left hand side, it, underneath, ask yourself. Last week, I skipped over the, oh, I didn't skip over it, but time ran out. Why did Solomon have to build a temple? Why did Solomon have to build a temple? Was it a, a government project, or, or, or what was it? His father promised God. Once again? His father promised God that he would do that. It, it was okay. There was a promise to God that, that he would build a temple. There's another reason. All right, Donna, are you with me here? Can you read that and down here? Okay. Uh, where it says uh, the writer of Kings. Right. Now, be, al be alert. The writer of Kings wrote this. He was not there when this was done, but they wrote it. And then, guess what? I opened the Sunday school lesson, and I get to read it. And go ahead, Donna. Where that silly picture is right there, 32. The writer of Kings was concerned about the spiritual danger of decentralizing worship at various high places in the absence of a temple. Israel was forbidden to worship on hilltops and housetops, which the Canaanites had used as worship sites. Israelites were to worship only at the site that God designated. 
But worship on high places developed in Israel with the uh, particular part, what? Partic 